Welcome to the Hard to Kill podcast with me, your host, Dave Morrow. The goal of this podcast is to be a catalyst for change in the health and wellness of our military community and make each of you harder to kill. My mission is to help 100,000 veterans lose 2 million pounds by listening to the amazing wisdom and knowledge shared by my guests. Sit back and enjoy. Let's go. Let's go. All right. So LP, we're sitting down again. This is, I don't know, like episode six. I don't know. But at this point, you're just basically like furniture here on the Heart to Kill podcast. And I said that kind of French, like podcast. Anyways. Um, <laughs> and it's... It, La it's, fourniture uh, of the podcast. <laughs> I've done two podcasts in French. We won't be doing this one in French, though. Um, <laughs> to be honest, I don't think we've ever spoken French to each other. It would be weird. Um, no, I don't think so. So uh, the point of today is to recap the last five months because folks, if you're just tuning into this one, if you go back five months, I decided to hop on what's called The Project, which is hosted by Bedros Koulian in California. It's three days of military hazing, so you have any doubt basically to help you for entrepreneurs to get yourself to the next level in fitness, in business, in mindset. And it's, um, it's a bag drive. And I never got to do anything like that in the military in terms of having Navy SEALs yell at me and tell me to get into the water and do all kinds of wild stuff. And I thought this would be a great way to put a cherry on top of my recovery, my fitness journey, my personal journey, my entrepreneurship journey, and enter into a new phase, let's put it. So I reached out to LP. I was like, dude, I did something. <laughs> Can you help? <laughs> So I was like, LP, I heard that one yeah. before. <laughs> yeah, you get, you're getting used to the pattern. <laughs> exactly. Hey, uh, you, know the, you know the plan we had already established? Yeah, we're not doing that anymore. We're doing this one now. <laughs> it's like, all right. Uh, okay, sure. Sounds good. So we really, uh, well, it, it was a, it's always a collaborative effort. And uh, LP, the uh, point here is really to get into where I've improved and share some of the results. And you've got a cool dashboard that I wasn't, uh, well, I was tracking, but I wasn't tracking the, uh, the readiness score. So first of all, let's, let's start with where I started and, uh, then we can move into where, uh, I've ended up. So I guess I have some results that I'll share with you and, uh, yeah. I'll share those first, and then you can share your insights based on, on what you saw. So when we started out, when we started out, October of last year, 2023. And I have my, my scores here. So just talking body weight, body fat. Now, originally we we're supposed to do a DEXA scan. I couldn't get the company here. I don't know if they closed or whatever. So it didn't end up happening in, in a short enough window of time. So I just started doing body tape measurements and using the scale. So my original body tape measurement, I was 224 pounds and I'm 6'4", my neck was about 15 inches, and my waist was 36 inches at the time. I then, and I can actually show this so that folks can actually have a visual here because rather than staring at this here, perfect. Okay, whoops, oh, I just gave away the, <laughs> there we go. So this is the first one. So 224 pounds, it gave me a body fat percentage of around 19%. Okay, that's where I was starting from. And then, Five months later, with some intentional training, I'm down to 213 pounds. Obviously, I'm still the same height. And my waist went down to 34 inches. And that gives me a body fat of around 15%. So I'm actually really happy with that because even during the Ironman, when I was getting ready for that, I was still hovering around 15%, but I was not nearly as strong. I didn't look as strong. I didn't have as much muscle mass. I was skinny. Right, I was getting ready for the Ironman. So this, I'm very happy with, man. So, um, what were like some of your, I guess, main, main, the main focus when it came to training and you know putting stuff in the training plan that would actually get me there? Because clearly, it worked. It's like a four percent body fat drop, which I'm like super stoked about. And I still want to lose more, by the way. I want to look super shredded for the summer. So FYI, that's the next mission. Summer shred is coming up. But yeah, uh, yeah, so what was um like what was your thought process for the um yeah the program? I think I I think even before we start talking about training, the first big takeaway is what you were doing with people 
uh, maybe surprised by the approach that you were taking because we weren't necessarily eating in a way to allow you to cut to use like the typical no. language for for losing body fat like a lot of what we were doing was focused on improving performance and you were fueling according to that and so the way you were eating was thinking about the performance that you needed to achieve in the gym and even with that you saw some well you just told us some drastic improvements in terms of your of mm -hmm. your body composition so i think yeah, that's a really uh, impor important take home message here um, and then in terms of training, we had two big phases of training where the first one was really to build capacity, build volume tolerance. And so we had, we had a lot of strength work. We had a lot of initially, even before we started doing strength work, we did a lot of volume hypertrophy work. Remember, we talked on our last episode a lot about German body composition training. So you did a lot of compound exercise, higher repetition, um, supersets. Uh, small rest periods. So you were basically huffing and puffing. You're doing your it's cardio brutal. work while you were in the gym, <laughs> essentially. Brutal. Yeah. And kind of that set the stage for the second phase of your training, which was a lot more oriented towards some of the performance metric that you had, which were improving on some running scores, uh, the 302 test. We had some a rep uh, bench press test, uh, a squat rep test. Um, and so you had like, a, we had like, um, we could call that undulating periodization. So in parts of the week, you were focusing more on strength. So you could think of it as lower repetition count with higher intensity, so higher loads. And then other parts of the week for the same similar movement patterns, you were doing more volume work. And so mm -hmm. lighter weights with more repetition. And some of that work was the classical 8 to 12 reps for three to four sets and some of it was a lot more dense where you're almost kind of working for 10 to 15 minute non-stop uh just kind of alternating upper body movements in your accessory work essentially Probably. and around all of that the closer we've been getting to this point here which is almost go time the more the conditioning the cardio was increasing you were running more you were doing bigger grindy amraps in your training like 30 minutes of hard continuous work with assault bike strongman type stuff odd object stuff um i think that gives the people a decent overview of of, of the yeah. principles behind the program yeah um yeah just to go back to the nutrition side of things i was just staying super focused on how much protein i was getting during the day and was i getting enough calories yeah and i i was able to judge that also just by how i felt and I felt like a rock star for a, like the majority of this five months. There were some ups and downs. Like I got really sick at one point, but I bounced back relatively fast, even though it was probably one of the sickest I've ever been when I went to Las Vegas. Man, I've never been that sick. Um, but I, was still, uh, I still managed to get a good workout when I was in there, um, even though I had to go to the hospital. And then progressively since then, um, it's been... It's been pretty good. This last week was a little rough too. The kids were up and it was just like it ruined my sleep cycle and just I felt like shit. But like if you look and you blow, you know, and take a 5,000 foot or 50,000 foot perspective, overall, uh, I was crazy disciplined, which I was actually kind of, I've kind of never really done it that well before. And I think it's partly because it was compounding. As soon as I see the, as soon as I see the results, I go, oh, I keep on doing this. And it was the muscle mass, man. Honestly, I've never added that much muscle that quickly, which was really cool. So I was like, well, this is obviously working. Um, let's keep on going. So that German body comp stuff was freaking wild. So highly recommend folks if, if you want a really good body comp program, go check out LP's program. Um, okay, so now that we're like a few days away from go time, um, I'm feeling good. My body weight's pretty low. Um, now performance 302 test this is like the entry level selection test so for folks that are just tuning in it is a mile run then it's 100 push-ups 100 squat thrusts 100 crawl outs and then 100, a mile run um it's got to be done in under 75 minutes so when we started i have the results here and i'll share those as well when you started, we knew to give people context. We knew that you were you had the capacity to do it under that recommended time cap of seventy five minutes. We weren't sure exactly how fast you were going to do it. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, yeah, that, and that, that's important to know. I, I, I don't know the guys that are showing up, but you know, it's, it's, it's set up so that it's not impossible, obviously. And they're not expecting you to be an athlete to show up, but they are expecting you to have a, you know, st- a, a basic level of fitness before showing up. Right now, yeah, you're right. I, I do have, you know, I, I have done the Ironman, which gives me a certain level higher than most guys if they're just starting out of the gate. But even even so. I had a, you know, just a barely sub 50 minute 302 test when I started, but I was able to shave off 10 minutes. <laughs> I did it this week. And I'll be honest, I was, yeah, it sucked, but I had way more gas than I thought I was. And I, I was getting close to that 40 minute mark. I'm like, oh shit, I'm going to be able to do this in under 40 minutes. So then I started picking up the pace, but it's so, it's such a long test. I, I had to uh, really kind of, judge a little bit earlier how fast i'd have to go so yeah um like what what magic was it in the program man i because i i'll be honest i was like okay i'm doing the program and the runs i wasn't running my guts out but i was running i felt good the program was i was doing a lot of gym work i didn't feel like i was really hammering like quote unquote the cardio that much but this was a very cardio based activity so what is it that really um, allowed me to have a like dramatic improvement in, in, in this test. Yeah. Um, we could do an entire podcast episode on yes, that one that specifically. That was my point. You got it. We are going to do a podcast just on this test alone. <laughs> <laughs> We're, uh, so, so for the sake of this conversation right now, I'll try to keep it somewhet brief. Do cut me off if um, if we're going along here a little bit. Yeah, but well, no worries. I think one of the things that people need to realize is that like the the adaptation that you're going to benefit the most from is likely the one that you're not getting currently in your program. And if we look at what you were doing before you started this project, you were doing a lot of strength training. You weren't doing a lot of volume based work. You had some, but not anywhere close to what we're doing in this program. And you weren't doing a huge amount of aerobic training. And so I was anticipating that you'd respond fairly quickly to that stuff, irrespective of what we were doing, because you weren't doing it. And so you're kind of, you're, um, your system is sensitive to these new kind of stimuluses. And then, so my first idea was, okay, we need to build a better aerobic base. And to build a better aerobic base, what you need is volume and you don't necessarily need a lot of intensity. You just need to accumulate. If we're talking about running, we need to accumulate mileage and we so keep like, it at a low intensity. That's like zone two stuff, right? That's the magic of zone two training. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And let's be honest here. Dave did not just do zone two training to increase his performance. So don't anticipate that if you do zone two, you're certainly going to become a machine, but it's really good support work for all of the training that you do. And it's your, the base of your pyramid. So you have to build that base to eventually have a, a higher peak. Right, And so that's what a lot of what we did, which at the same time allows you to recover so that you can do all the other training that we were doing in the gym. And so that's the first thing we built your initially aerobic capacity through a lot of volume of zone two stuff. And then we started layering the intensity. And if you want to, I mean, to explain to you how we did this would take, like I said, a full podcast episode. But if you want a simple framework that you could maybe apply to your own training at home, it's like if you look at the duration of the test and you break it down into chunks of 25%, you can do intervals of work at around 25% of the actual workout time at a similar intensity. And that's going to help you significantly improve your capacity for that test specifically. Okay. Also, like if you're doing like eight to 10 minutes of work with some rest and then repeat, that would be a good example of that. But that's the first thing because for that test, you need a good capacity from an endurance perspective. But there's also the flip side, which is arguably even more important, in my opinion, for a test like this, which is upper body muscle endurance. Like yeah. you need to be able to do a lot of reps of that test specifically is pushing, 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 pushing. And so you have to do a lot of that in training and build volume of that so that you have incredibly enduring shoulders when you come to your retest, which clearly was the case for you. Dude, my shoulders are popping. They're popping. Like 42 years old and my shoulders are popping. Sick. (laughs) I I mean, if we keep going this way at 45, it's going to be even more obvious. 
Yeah, I'm going to dangerous. put 25 I'm going to put 25 year old dudes to shame, man. That's my I think that's my new I think that's my <laughs> that new should standard. be the mission. Just going to shame 25 year old dudes. Um, <laughs> to add to what you're saying here, to put another metric in, I was tracking my VO2 max. The VO2 max when we started was at 45. It's now at 47. So the, to improve VO2 max takes quite a bit of effort. And VO2 max is a function of uh, how much oxygen we can take in and efficiently utilize it and blood volume, et cetera. So it's a, it's a pretty complicated calculation, but it requires quite a bit of effort to move it just one point. And what I'm pleased about is a, a VO2 max of around 47 puts me in like the 90th percentile for men in the four, in your 40s. Oh, does it, huh? I think so. Um, let me, I, I hope, I hope I'm not talking on my ass here. Hold on a sec. Okay. Men 40 to 40. I hope that's men. Hold on a sec here. VO2 max. No, it's women. Oh crap. VO2. <laughs> uh, all right. I'm getting all kinds of different figures here. The one I originally had was a woman's chart. So I was like, sweet, I'm crushing it. But okay. I'll have to, I'll have to post one that's more relevant, but from what I can see here from the generalized one. Yeah, 44 to 48, uh, for, sorry, 47 to 51 is very good in the 40 to 44-year-old range. So I, if I can get above 51, that would be excellent. So way above average, so way above the top 5 percentile. So yeah, that's, and that I feel, if, mm -hmm. if that makes sense, um, in terms of when I'm doing those grindy, grindy type workouts, it's like I just have a bigger gas tank. And yeah, but I got a little bit stronger, got a little bit, but it's, you know, I'm, my heart rate isn't jacked up to, you know, threshold necessarily. It's not like 180 something when I'm doing these type of workouts under load. That's been the biggest change. And let's not forget, dude, my leg strength, I've noticed a massive difference. Well, only, and also because my pants don't really fit. Mm. <laughs> like my, my, my can, like I got so much junk in my trunk That's right now. That's unfortunate. Like, it's just like, so what happened was I bought pants when I was a fatty. So before we started all this, around the summertime, I really packed on a lot of weight. And um, so I bought jeans because I needed new jeans at like 36, 37. Now they, 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 they're they all floppy. So my belts are like, I don't have any more space left on the belt. Um, and the jeans fit tight in the legs, but they're super loose in the, in the waist. So these are all objective measures of, of success, but my single leg strength has gone up. Like, do you have like quantifiable evidence that that's the case or just my leg strength has, has gone up quite a bit? I don't remember off the top of my head for your single leg strength specifically, even though we did a lot of single leg training in your, in, in your workouts. That mm -hmm. being said, your back squat numbers shot up significantly and those I, uh, I have some more clear insight on if we want to talk about that. Okay, yeah, sure. Absolutely. Let's do it. I mean, so your target was was an AMRAP with the 90 kilo bar as I'm pulling up my, I'm going off the top of my head right now. So got mm. it, got it, got it. So, I mean, we were essentially, you wanted to, you wanted to rep out 90 kilos for the squat and the yeah. target was to get at least 11 reps from uh, the, uh, from the basic army metrics that you, uh, that you had mm -hmm. spoken mm -hmm. to me about. And so, I mean, we started with issues with your back that we had to deal with. And then we, uh, you were running at somewhere around five reps of this 90 kilo or somewhere around there at the beginning. And you ramped up all the way to 11 reps at an eight RPE because you didn't want to push it so far because mm -hmm. back was still a little bit iffy. You had a little bit of a flare up. So with a flare to back, you're essentially doubling the reps you're able to do with 90 kilos. And we had a, Similar improvement on the bench press as well. Sweet. Yeah, uh, that was, yeah, those two, like the single leg, I feel insanely strong. My knees feel amazing. Was that, that workout where we did an EMOM where we were doing back squats and then pull-ups. You're like, yeah, start at like 175, five reps and, you know, do was eight, eight sets of that. I was like, dude, I can't do that. <laughs> I did one set and I was like, 
I can't do four more. I can't do four more. These are five more or six more of these. There's no way I'm going to be mm-hmm. able to. So I had to really bump the weight down. I think it was at one for shoes, which I think is, is, is pretty cool. And it gives me a lot more confidence, a lot more capacity um, to do what I have to do. Cause I know there's going to be a lot of lunging and a lot of just payment um, on this type of training on this type of project for sure. Um, so um, let's chat briefly now about this performance dashboard. I want to know yeah. a little bit more like, my readiness dashboard, if you if I think is what you called it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the so the biofeedback dashboard is essentially our way of keeping track of metrics that are both inside and outside of the gym. So how's how do you rate your performance in the gym as well as how do you rate your biofeedback, which is essentially looking at how your body is feeling on a day-to-day basis. And so we'll keep track of stuff like sleep quality, motivation, soreness level, um, mood, which are all either leading or lagging indicators of what's going on in outside the gym. And so if you're mm-hmm. looking at these metrics, you can either get a sense of, okay, your lifestyle shit right now, and this is currently affecting your recovery, or everything we've been doing from a training and lifestyle perspective is slowly pushing you in the right direction. You know what I mean? Yeah. And we started implementing this kind of strategy last year within the program or I started doing that with all of my people. And um, so I have data from 2023 for you. Um, and I have the rolling average now since 2024. And that's, I think, one of the biggest wins for you in terms of improving like overall health and fitness is that all of your all of your scores on the on the biofeedback are significantly increased like if you want i could give you a, a couple of examples here i have yeah, yeah of course. Up. so where are you at here dave so i mean if we're looking at your if we're looking at your sleep quality the average nice even number for 2023 was six on ten whereas now you're at an eight on ten nice all right, and then your stress and anxiety was at a five. There's a lot going on for you, and it's been a struggle recently. But you're still up by one point three points, so at six point three, which is really good. Um, motivation to train has gone from six point five to nine. Mood from five point eight to eight point three. And to kind of give you guys a summary here, all of these factors combined together, we're putting Dave's readiness score at a fifty percent. So I kind of calculate an average of some of these metrics and currently for 2024 so far he's sitting at a 78.33 percent and so all of the things inside the gym and outside have been going in the right direction and that's a combination of everything that you've done from your training improving to your nutrition to just kind of taking care of business from a lifestyle perspective nice nice Dude, this has been such a, uh, I, you know, I, I realize I need big challenges in order to really focus myself yeah. and do something. So this has been probably one of the best things that I've undertaken in terms of not only like physical development, but personal development too. I haven't even gone yet and I've already leveled up, which is really cool. So I feel ready. I did some rope climbs today. I don't know if you saw the post I, I saw the on post. Instagram. I suck at those, but you know what? I'm able to get up the rope, but just really shittily. Uh, so aside from rope climbs, I feel super confident. Now it's just a matter of having the right mindset and being able to endure. I've done it in the past in the military. This is really going to test to see whether or not I still got it, which is kind of the point. So I feel good, Ben. And I thank you so much for, you know, sticking by me and making sure that I had to write programming and making sure that when things were really shitty, like, you were just, yeah, you held me down, man. So I really appreciate that. Gotcha, and, uh, bro. I mean, I yeah. always say the same thing, like writing the program on, on paper is easy. It's doing the work. That's the hard part. So you got to thank yourself, bro. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> but without, without it, cause I mean, and without the constant, um, you know, uh, check-ins and, and being able to, um, to chat with you about things and, um, you know, I definitely wouldn't have had the same results. I can guarantee that. So, um, yeah. So the next challenge is going to be the tactical games coming up in June 1st after yes, this sir. one. So I'm hoping that there's going to be a favorable result and I'll be able to get through the project uh, next week, which I'll be blacked out like comms blackout from Tuesday to Friday. So um, 
folks, if you're if you're listening to this now, and uh, if you see me on Instagram and they're humiliating me, it's because I failed. So that's public humiliation if you fail. Um, but if not, then it's a positive sign. It means I got through, and then I'll be posting when uh, when I get back home too. And then I'll be off to the tactical games and, and figuring that training plan out. And we can have another chat about that. And then we definitely need to chat about that big. VO2 max and performance upgrade when it comes to zone two trading and adaptations. I think that's going to be a really good episode LP. So we'll, we'll get that on the books too when I get back. So I'm um, in. That's awesome. In the meantime, awesome. uh, good luck. We're going to be Thank keeping, uh, keeping track of the uh, process as much as we can on social media. Is that right? That's right. That's right. And uh, yeah, then when it's uh, yeah, shred city in uh, in the summer, we'll we'll do some more reveal uh, posts and uh, yeah, be the bodies by LP, right? Let's That's go. It. All right, buddy. Well, All right, it's man. always a hoot. Yes, sir. Thanks again. We'll check in when I get back. And uh, folks, uh, if you're uh, curious and want to know more about LP, I'm going to drop his links in the description here. And uh, if you want to coach, it's going to get you to the next level. LP is your man. So that's it for me. Have a good, good one, Good luck, man. We'll talk to you soon. See you, folks. Ciao. Peace. I hate t-shirts that get floppy in the arms after 10 washes. So that's why I created a bunch of t-shirts with high quality cotton just for you so that you can go to the gym and look fresh, sport some philosophy, and smash those PRs looking good. So you need to head to davemorrow.net slash merch. Grab yourself a hat. Grab yourself a t-shirt. Grab yourself a sweater and support the cause today.